Who wants to learn something today? Good morning and welcome to another Monday edition of Sun Dragon Tips and Tricks. I'm Rebecca. I'm the owner of Sun Dragon Art and Fiber in downtown Brevard, North Carolina. And outside of town at my house today, it is a very sunny, wonderful day. So I thought I would, I've been doing a few videos on casting on and different ways to start a project. I only have one video up I discovered about binding off. And it is the very classic knit two or purl two, pull one stitch over the other and keep going. So today on this sweater, I finished the sleeves with a version of Jenny's stretchy, surprisingly stretchy bind off. Now that would be jumping from beginner to more intermediate. So I thought I'd put one in the middle that is more of an advanced beginner. You can totally do it. If you know how to knit and purl, you can do this one. This is a stretchy bind off because most people find that the classic bind off, unless you go up a couple needle sizes, is pretty tight. This one is looser because we're not twisting our knit stitches. Knit stitches, techni technically, um, a classic knit stitch gets twisted. This is knit two together through the back loop and you keep putting the stitch that you make back over and keep going. So come with me on the journey to learn how to do a stretchy bind off. Let's get to it. So today we're going to talk about a stretchy bind off and there are many. The focus of today's is going to be knit two together through the back loop. So often in a pattern it will be abbreviated with a bunch of letters and numbers and oh my gosh what the heck are they talking about. So let's break it down. Take it piece by piece. Knit two. Together they often say tog together because there's a lot of T's so we got to differentiate them. Knit two together. TBL we've got through the back loop. Not to be confusing at all. Knit two together through the back loop. Articles are usually are not abbreviated when they do all these crazy abbreviations. So easy peasy, right? <laughs> so let's take a look at what we're talking about. There's something that's repeated the entire time once you get going, but first you have to do a setup. So let's talk about that first. We need to get stitches that are stretchier. So the setup is going to have you just knit one K1 instead of K2. Knit one stitch through the back loop. Now, when you have a knit stitch that is hanging out on the needle, so let's, let's draw a little uh, example of this. We have the front and we have the back. And when you knit, you tend to come around from the far side and knit through the front loop. And that twists the whole thing around. It twists the entire thing around. That can make it tight. If you knit through the back loop, instead of coming all the way around and through, you just head straight through. Straight through just to catch the back edge. So this is TBL. And this is just a knit. We'll take a look in the drawings and see it in real life in just a second. So your setup, you're going to knit one stitch through the back loop, just sticking your needle straight through, only catching the back side. Then you're going to take the finished stitch that ends up on your right needle, and you're going to transfer it back over to the left needle. And I've put here purl wise. Again, no twisting. We're trying not to twist. Purl wise just means straight. Don't twist. We're trying not to twist the stitches. What keeps this open and stretchy is not twisting anything. And then we get to what is repeated until you are done. Until you are done. This repeat. You're going to do that K2 TOG TBL. Knit two stitches together through the back loop. Knit two together through the back loop. 
and then that stitch that you've made, return it to the left needle. Underline some key phrases here. Return the stitch that's made by knitting the two together back over to your left needle. And just keep repeating that. So the stitch you just made gets knit with the next one and gets taken back and the stitch you just made gets knit with the next one. You will decrease your stitches, believe it or not. Repeat those steps, one and two. Repeat them until you have only one stitch left and this stitch will be on your right needle, heads up. If you go until you only have one stitch left on your left needle, you still have a stitch on your right needle. You'll see that when, you, when it happens. You gotta do one more repeat and then you end up with one stitch on your right needle. Just go ahead and cut your yarn with, with a six inch tail and pull it through the loop to fasten off. Adding my notes with my red marker here. Let's take a look at what this looks like with some drawings before we head to the real stuff. So, in these drawings, what I've done, the first drawing here is what it will look like. This is the beginning of a K2 together through the back loop. This is what it looks like when you've stuck your needle in. Now again, normally for a knit stitch, you would go this way through those stitches. So that, this is the motion, a regular K2 together comes from left to right through those stitches. comes left to right, oh, let's keep that in the frame, comes left to right through the front. Can you see how that would twist? Everything gets twisted around if that happens. A knit two together through the back loop goes through those stitches in some ways from right to left. There's no twisting of those stitches. You're still combining them. You still go in and you're still going to wrap around. The rest of the stitch is still going to be the same. This working yarn down here is still going to come and wrap around and come out. Let's do what we always do. Let's color code some of this. The first stitch is pink, second stitch is blue, the only other stitch we're going to deal with here is going to be the green guy. And then let's make our working yarn a different shade of green, more of a blue green. So the yarn that's going to come and wrap around to complete this knit two together, it's going to be that blue green. Here's what it looks like when that stitch is done. So this is our finished K2 together, knit two together through the back loop. And if we take a look at our colors, we've got our first and second stitches have been knit by the working yarn. So what's now on the right needle is our new stitch. And our light, our yellow green stitch has moved up to the head of the line here. 
Now the next step is to return this stitch over here. Slide it back over. Purl wise, don't, don't turn anything, just get it back over. That's easier to demonstrate with the real yarn instead of the drawings. But then, what it will look like, what I've drawn here is the beginning of our next beginning of the next knit two together through the back loop. Now let's see what's happened. The new stitch that was made is on the end of your left needle. The stitch that had moved to the beginning of the queue is one behind. And if you really want to know where our first and second stitches are, they're down here now. And when these get knit two together, they'll be right here and the process will keep going. And let's see with real yarn what happens when you reach the end. So here's my little sample with only a few stitches. This will work really well for something that is all knit or all purl. A ribbing, it'll give it a flat edge, which you may or may not like for the ribbing. It's hard to bind off in pattern if that pattern is not knitting every stitch. But again, it's stretchy. So, so the setup, Remember, this twists a regular knit switch stitch coming over, or if we wanted to do a regular knit two together. Can you see how that would twist and pull everything up tight? So all your knit stitches, instead of being done classically through the front, we're going to do them through the back loop. Again, instead of coming from left to right through the front, we're going to go straight through the, the stitch. If I don't catch this next stitch, straight straight through the stitch from right to left. If you want to see what it looks like from the top. But then the knit, and we're not doing a purl. A purl would be straight through bringing your needle up to the front. We're going straight through to the back. Grab your yarn, wrap around in between. That's what you do for a knit stitch. And then I like to call it a little bit of a duck and tuck, pulling it back through here. It's a slightly different motion than if you were pulling out the way you came in on a regular knit stitch. Now we're gonna, we're not gonna twist. Again, any twisting makes this tighter. You're gonna slip it purl wise, and a one way to think about purl wise is to think about going straight through the stitch. The other one is if you pause as you're sliding it back, it'll look like you're about your your needles are in the right position to do a purl stitch. But we're not doing that. We're just slipping it purl wise. So that stitch we just made is ending up back on the left needle. Now, again, if we were gonna knit normally, we'd come all the way over here to knit two together and see how that would twist and cross and it'd get tight. So to knit two together through the back loop, we're going to go in straight. If we look at it from the front, we're going straight in and we're catching those back loops. Your needles are still in the right position to knit with your left one being in front, the right one is in back, got them crossed, but we've caught the back side of the stitch instead of coming to catch the front. Wrap around in between, do what I call a duck and tuck through the center, take it off. There's the two stitches I just combined together. Here's my new stitch. I'm gonna put my new stitch back over just slide it purl wise straight through no twisting and now we're going to take the new one we just put on and the next one sometimes i find it's helpful to look at it from the top knit two together through the back loop duck and tuck to pull that wrap around through go ahead and put it back on i'm going to keep going knit two together through the back loop duck and tuck to pull it under. If it feels really tight, see if you've caught a strand, you can always back out. I just tugged on this. I wouldn't tug too much because that is going to 
undo the whole purpose of this, which is to, to keep it loose and stretchy. So don't resist the impulse to tug after every stitch. Maybe just hold it enough to keep it on. Slide it back over. Catch the back side of two. Duck and tuck. Slide it off. Resist the impulse to tug on this because that will make it not stretchy. Slide it back over. If you need to, feel around till you can get the two. Duck and tuck. Slide it back over. I'm sliding these guys up. Slide it back over. Sometimes when I slide it back over, I don't even move my needle. I just flip it to the back side, catch my second. Try not to catch any wispies of the third and keep going. If that makes sense, awesome. If not, take it a step at a time. Slide it over, knit two together. Slide it over, knit two together through the back loop. This is when I'm done. If I take out this last stitch, this is a spot where you could get stuck and say, I've got one stitch left. No, you've got two. You've got one over here. We need to keep going. Keep going until you have one stitch left here. Pull your loop big, cut your yarn here, and fasten it off. This is the yarn I use for like all my samples, so I'm not going to do that. But if I pull my like my new tail that I will cut here through this, it'll be fastened off and we'll be good. And take a look at that. That is super stretchy. Super, super. It, there's a lot of give, so if you need to block something, it won't pull super tight. And it looks nice on the top. Look at that. Thanks for coming along on that journey to do this stretchy bind off. Knit two together through the back loop put it back on your needle and go. If anything, my bind off is even stretchier than my cast on down here, which is usually the opposite. Usually the bind off can end up being kind of tight. So that can be a really great way. Not twisting things can be a really great way to make this stretchy. We'll see. Let me know next week. Let me know in the comments. Do you want to see a different way to cast on or a different way to bind off? which one would be more exciting to continue with. I do one of these a week, and I love suggestions. If it's possible to show you stuff, I will. So before I go, I just want to remind you, if you haven't subscribed yet, really consider that because you can get alerts when the next video comes out, especially if you hit that little bell. At least give this a thumbs up if you liked it. Share it with people you think could benefit from this. And as I always like to say, May your crafting be filled with joy and confidence. Have a good day. Is that some old knitting of mine? Comfy, huh? Makes a box all that much comfier. That is a happy kitty.